to look at the role of AI, maybe it's it's good to kind of just give a, a background about you know why genomics. So you know the the beauty of genomics is you know it studies the uh, the code of life, if you will. You know you, me, and every eight billion plus of us on this planet uh, share. You know, the first time I realized this, I was I was blown away. You know how much we, you and I, and all these eight, eight billion people share in common in our genetic genetic makeup. More than ninety nine point nine percent of the uh, genetic makeup. So think about this: ninety nine point nine percent similarities. What makes us different is less than you know point one percent. You know, not to mention also, I'm a hepatobiliary surgeon. I'm still practicing. So I practice on abdominal organs and, you know, uh, I practice in the States, in Canada, and, and I'm practicing now in Saudi Arabia. And, and uh, again, we, we have the same organs. So in a way, we're almost identical twins. And, and the outside is kind of just the packaging, if you will, the coverage. And rather than embracing the 99% you know, similarity that we have, you know, we focus on the, on the, uh, unfortunately, less than 1% difference. So that's a starting point. Now, as a practicing, you know, clinician, modern medicine for decades focused on one size fits all, you know, you have a headache, we give you a Panadol based on your weight. If you have an infection, we give you antibiotics, uh, based on your weight, etc. But Actually, there is a lot of more nuance and, and details when it comes to that, because based on your genetic makeup, the medications that you get, that's pharmacogenomics, whatever health and wellness aspects, the bacteria that we have, the, which, which it's called the microbiome, that's the normal bacteria, uh, is also an important factor. Now, in 2001, when the human genome was fully sequenced, we got all this information. And when we realized that to do the sequencing, that creates a lot of data. And by the year 2025, actually, we should stop saying astronomical and we should, we should start saying genomical because genomics is going to be the first driver of big data. Now, one human genome can create more than 20 gigabytes of, of data, one individual. There's a saying that data is a new oil. So, uh, you know, with big data and big analytics, this is where you need to leverage, uh, you know, AI. AI has, and I think will will continue to have as we're moving forward, a lot of uh, impact in the in the analytic space of of the you know through the sequencing because when we go through the sequencing we have what's called the wet lab so when you have the sample the blood sample or the saliva or what have you and then the transition be uh, between going from the sequencing of the DNA or the genetic material into data the base pairs of data that constitutes the DNA. And when you do that at speed and when you do that at scale with, with you know, creating that large amounts of, uh, you know, uh, data, there's no way that you can do this with efficiency and with effectiveness without leveraging the AI. So that's just the mere analysis of the data that comes out. But it goes beyond that. So, so then, uh, you know, when you start scaling your genetic sequencing, uh, you know, in a place like Novo Genomics, when you talk about, you know, these population-based uh, genomics programs, you know, like the Saudi Genome Program and, 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 and others, then the insights that you get out of those that can help with promoting health and wellness, that can help with drug discovery work, uh, that can help with gene editing work. All that requires, you know, I would say a foundational aspect of it is going to be AI. But then when you integrate a genomic database with the electronic health records database, because currently 
uh, all the clinical data in clinics and hospitals, et cetera, lack the, the, the genetic, the genomic component. I think when you add the, that to it, I think the sky is going to be the limit in terms of what learnings and insights that we would get out. And, 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 and then I believe the future is going to be one that newborn babies will go home with their whole genome sequence and also their microbiome sequence. And then we would put them on a proactive, personalized, you know, health and wellness uh, plan rather than waiting, you know, for them to get sick. Like, I think we're going to be the last generation that will not have a deep understanding of of its health and wellness, you know, condition. And and I think this is again where AI would 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 come in, and then predictively, you know, proactively connecting you can you know because if my AI now knows about my genetic makeup, knows about my clinical history, know, knows about what medications I'm on, knows about my microbiome. Then when I go to the, you know, my own chat GBT or whatever generative AI is, when I go to the, to the, to the restaurant and I can just scan the menu, then my personal AI would say, you know, I, I would stay away from that, you know, go with that, giving all the aspects so I think that that is that is not science fiction. I think that's that's science reality, and that's going to come uh, very soon.